The first talk will be given by Juan Ramon Ramos Serrano, Luminescent and Electrical Properties of Pink Dials Based on Silicon Carbide Hydrogen Thin Films. Okay, uh, welcome. Okay. Start your presentation. Thanks for introducing me. Uh, my name is Juan Ramon Ramos Serrano. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the INAOE, and I'm going to talk about the luminescent and electrical properties of the pin diodes based on amorphous silicon carbide simply mass. Well, uh, this is the outline of this presentation. I'm going to start with an introduction. Uh, I'm talking about the motivation for this work, um, the silicon photonics, and that's in the experimental uh, procedure. I described the PCBD system and the deposition parameters. And next, I present some results related to this work, namely the electroluminescence uh, and current voltage measurements. And finally, I present some conclusions. Well, what is the motivation for this work? Uh, it is well known that the internet global traffic increased year after year, as we can observe in this table. Uh, it is estimated that the internet traffic um, reached uh, 85 gigabytes per month per user. From this, uh, close to 80% correspond to the video streaming service. Uh, what's the main problem associated to the internet growth? Well, uh, the main problem of the increase in the internet traffic is the energy consumption in the data centers. It is estimated that the data centers consume close to 2% of the total electrical energy produced in the world. In this figure, we can observe the energy demand in this data center. And as we can observe, the highest consumption uh, is related to the cooling system. In this photograph, uh, we can observe the Google data centers cooling system. Uh, this is due to, to the data, data centers are based on microelectronics devices. And as we know, exist the energy dissipation in the form of heat due to the gel effect. So photonics emerge as an alternative to conventional electronic for digital communication. Uh, photonics allow transferring data at larger distance at higher speeds and with lower energy consumption. In a particular case, we can refer to the silicon photonics as the ability to generate, transport, and detect photons throughout the devices compatible with the current CMOS technology infrastructure. Um, for the development of the sili silicon photonics, the main technological challenge is the development of light emitting source based on silicon. Uh, as we know, the silicon is an indirect band gap semiconductor, so the non radiative recombination prevails. And that means that silicon has an extremely, extremely low internal quantum efficiency, about uh, 10 to minus 6. Uh, the amorphous silicon carbide is a material of interest for the development of light emission devices. Uh, this is due to its pro optical and electrical properties. Uh, Many reports show that changing the silicon carbon ratio in the material changes its optical gap, allowing um, light emission in the different regions of the receiving spectrum. Uh, on the other hand, um, silicon carbide has a smaller gap and higher mobility for the charge carriers than other silicon based materials, as silicon oxide or silicon nitride. And finally, uh, it is possible to obtain the silicon carbide films by different techniques um, compatible with the standard CMOS technology. Well, the plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition or PCBD is a technique that attract research attention due to, to its ability to obtain high quality films at low deposition temperatures. This temperature it can be as low as room temperature. Uh, therefore, it is possible to use uh, different kinds of, of substrate as glass, uh, PET, or substrate with organic films. Um, also, the PCBD system presents a high efficiency in the use of the gases. 
And finally, this technique is upgradable to an industrial scale. Uh, figure one shows the PCBD cluster in the in our microelectronics lab. Uh, this cluster consists in three independent chambers for the N type, P e type, and intrinsic layers uh, respectively. Well, uh, in this work, we'll report the implementation of pin idols um, as a light emission devices using an intrinsic amorphous silicon carbide uh, as active layer. Uh, the structures were implemented uh, with a low temperature process. Uh, the active layers were deposited following previously reported parameters based in the silent methane ratio. And these active layers displayed a strong photoluminescence in the green glow. And spectral range. Uh, figure two shows the scan of the implementing structures. Um, the structures were implemented on P-type crystal and silicon wafer. As active layer, we use uh, an intrinsic uh, amorphous silicon carpet layer, and a phosphorotoped uh, amorphous silicon was used as N-type layer. As back contact, we use aluminum, and we use uh, Indian tin oxide, oxide as top contact. Finally, uh, square sharp patterns of one millimeter square were defined with the photolithography process. Uh, the table one has summarized the deposition parameters uh, for the structures and some physical properties of the film. Uh, for the pin one structure, we have a optical gap higher than the pin two structure. Figure 3 shows the electroluminescence spectra of the pin structure and the photoluminescence spectra as a reference the active, active layer. Uh, but the structure show detectable light emission only in four quad bytes. Um, the pin 1 and pin 2 struts require a voltage of 70 and 32 volts, uh, respectively, to reach the maximum emission intensity. Uh, as we can observe, there exists a difference in the max in the position of the maximum emission uh, for two structures. Uh, this difference is related to the properties of the active, active layers. Um, on the other hand, we can observe a red sheet from the photoluminescence spectra to the electroluminescence spectra. Uh, this is related to two different uh, causes. Uh, First, a process of thermalization of the uh, electrons at the condu conduction band. And on the other hand, uh, many reports uh, show that holes are directly injected in deep state of the active layer. But this is the current voltage characteristic of the instructors. It is important to, to mark the due to the difference in the gap of the P intrinsic and N layers. There are discontinuities in the in the conduction and balance band. Uh, this discontinuity forms uh, potential barriers at the different interface in the structure. Um, the active layer of the, of the pin one structure has a considerably larger gap than the pin two structure. However, it shows a higher increase in the current at lower uh, voltage PS. Um, this can be related to an increase in the density of the localized tile state. Um, to know how the carrier moved across the structure, we analyzed the current voltage curves on the different models as direct tunneling, uh, polar not kind, full Frankel, and trap assistant tunneling. Uh, but in this case, the, the curves only fit with the Fogler not high model and the trap assisted tunneling. Well, this is a scheme as for the for no, Fogler not high tunnel, and this is the expression for this mechanism of conduction. Uh, according to this model, the plot shown in the figure six must have a linear fit. Uh, we can observe that only the pin to a structure present this linear fit in the 
the region related to the electric fields greater than two mega electron volts. So this is related to the potential value since the intrinsic ledger has a greater gap than the, in the pin one structure. Uh, this is a scheme for the trap assisted tunneling, and this is the expression for this for this model. And according to this model, the graph shows in figure seven must have a linear fit. Uh, as we can observe in this case, only the pin one structure present this linear fit. Uh, and in this, in this case, uh, we can relate this to, to a higher density of defects in localized states uh, for the pin one structure. Uh, well, uh, based on the results present, uh, we proposed uh, schematic energy band diagrams of the different pin structure. Um, and as conclusion, a relation between the silicon carbon content with the maximum in the emission band was observed. Uh, as we can observe, uh, when we increase the, the silicon content, we have a, a reduction in the optical gap, the active layer. Uh, the structure deposit with the, a lower silicon content so shows a shorter wavelength in emission with a higher intensity at, the, at lower voltage bias. Okay. Um, the red shift from the photoluminescence spectra to the electroluminescence spectra was related to a lost energy uh, from the electrons in the conduction band by a thermalization process. Uh, while the holes are directly injected in deep state of the active layer. Uh, for the pin one structure, the truck assisted tunnel was associated with the lower silicon content structure um, to a higher density of defects in localized states. Um, and for the pin two structure, the forward not high tunnel was related to the highest silicon content due to a lower barrier height in the intrinsic layer. Uh, that's all. Then. We want to thank to Armando Hernandez for his technical assistance. And also we thank to Dr. Mariano Ceres and Dr. Oscar Perez from INAO Electrophotonics Laboratory for the photoluminescence and electroluminescence measurements. And finally, I want to, to thank to Conacyt for the scholarship granted. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Very welcome. <laughs> Um, for the deposition, deposition of the uh, layers, what is the temperature? Uh, 200 degrees. 200 degrees for all the layers. For all the layers? Yes. Okay. Questions? Well, I have a couple of questions. The first one could be, what is the internal quantum efficiency of your failure? Do you have an idea? No, I, I don't have the opportunity to, to measure the quantum efficiency. Because your motivation, you say you are going to, yes, yes. to spare energy, but if you want to save energy, you have to go to the efficient diodes. Yes. yes, that 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 could be me. And well, and thinking of the subtle temperature, why 200 degrees? You stated that you could uh, have yeah. a room temperature or yes, it's, um, we part from previous works from other PhD students and work as this. Uh, Temperature for. And what do you expect if you rise the temperature? I mean, if I try to do it at 400. Yes. Yeah. I think it's possible to do the emission band shift. I don't know if higher wavelength or shorter wavelength. Uh, possibly uh, the conduction also increase. 
Well, in fact, it was my next question is why amorphous silicon carbide and not polypsaline or crystalline? Uh, we try to, to obtain the poly, uh, crystalline silicon carbide, but it did not work uh, you know, for this presentation. We uh -huh. work to polymorphous, uh, polymorphous silicon carbide, uh -huh. which is an amorphous matrix with and the crystal and the bit. Uh, but this uh, mm -hmm. uh, is a recent uh, work. But, but you don't have that because if you have a, if you rise the temperature, you are going to start to have polycrystal language. Yeah, it's not uh, easy to, to induce the formation of, okay. of nanocrystalline material. Uh, uh, for the polymorphous, we need to introduce it an extra argon gas and increase the power of the carrier. Okay, uh, question? Well, what you? Okay. Could you put a slide where are you showing your devices to, to show yes, the, 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 uh, what is the color, the, the, the light color there? In the pinto, the second, the second yes. is red, yes. no? according to the web link. Uh, yes, to the first one. To the camera, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, if if we, we see the spectrum, we have emission uh, a new infrared. Yeah, because the maximum yes, yes, the yes. Pink, what, the, the yeah, is the pink one, the light one is okay, red, effect but the third one is of the camera on the uh, the seal, but we have. A grand uh, a contribution in the infrared spectrum. Ah, okay. Another question. I, I didn't understand. What is the reason of this shift to to the shift yes. to the luminescence? What is uh, we propose the two process of uh, the electrons in the conduction band uh, was thermalized, so lose energy in this part, and the holes are directly injected in deep states. In the structure, so we have a, a, a gap, yes. but the whole pair, uh, all the electron pair recombination only take place uh, Change the this way. energy. Great. Any more questions? Well, if you don't have any more questions, we can thank the speaker. The next talk. The next talk is will be presented by Ashok Adhikari, and he's going to talk about the story of the properties of bark, milk, vanadium oxide powder, or gas sensor applications. Thank you, Mr. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is the work uh, what I'm going to present today. This is based on the vanadium, vanadium oxide, oxide uh, which is burned mid with different times. So here I am mentioning the contents of this, this presentation, which includes introduction, objectives, experimental details, results and discussions, conclusions, and acknowledgement. So starting from the introduction, as you know that uh, uh, new methods, new materials are emerging in the science, you know, like in technologies, due to the advancement of the of the technologies. So here I mentioned like uh, vanadium oxide, like why vanadium oxide, no? Why vanadium oxide materials? The main like the properties, the based on the material is it has it contains different valence states. From plus two to plus four, which con which has the different uh, colors and the structure, we have like, different chemical properties. As you mentioned, like here the materials BO, which is violet color, B203, 
green color BO2 blue and BO5 benzene uh, pentoxide is yellow. Yellow means uh, orange to yellow color, which varies the the valence state. So it contains like a uh, different uh, single valence compound like uh, BO2, BO5, this one, or mixed valence compound means the combination of these two like B6, O30, B10, O24. So the another most important thing is the is applications. It, depending on these materials, like uh, it can be used as catalysts, batteries, uh, super capacitors, smart windows, like ther thermochromic, electrochromic uh, sensors. These these materials like uh, have like this application have already discussed uh, in scientific in the research. So the objectives, main objectives of this. Study like uh, what we uh, wanted to do. The main focus is to prepare the material, you know, by using bone milling technique. First, the powders we prepare by bone milling, and then after we prepare the targets for this protein. The idea is that this is the basic idea to 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 work on this protein to 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 fabricate the targets for this protein to get the thin films for the, the thermochromy as well as solar cell applications. So, but in this case, we are going to use different um, milling times to uh, to optimize the which to optimize the conditions, favorable conditions or suitable conditions. And here also we analyze these uh, properties of the ma materials at different boiling times. So, this is the bulb milling technique where we use to. We use to put the materials here in two sites. We have the two containers, so we normally need to put the same amount, same quantity in both sides, uh, depending on the the weight of the balls. Um, these balls, we use 10% of the material in each side, and we are going to rotate like uh, normally. We are, we are having the facilitated like uh, 200 to 400, uh, I think 600 up to 600. We can do it, but here we have uh, done only 300 uh, revolution per minute. We vary the time three to 18 hours, and we have uh, characterized this structural of uh, morphological, compositional, optical, as well as electrical means for the sensing applications, electrical resistances. So results and discussions. So here I I have presented the two materials. First one is the before uh, before ball milling. And and after, but the idea is to check what is the difference. You no, know, what we can get different. So the main difference here, the all the peaks, what you can see uh, for before and after the bulb milling, we can see the same. The only difference is the dominant peak. So here, here we have the dominant peak before the bulb milling. We have zero zero one, but after that it changes to one one zero, like uh, it is like twenty five. So, but uh, in all cases, we have three three dominant peaks: 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and four zero zero. These three peaks are dominant, but among them, like uh, after bulb milling, we are having one one zero. So these peaks are related with the ortho orthorhombic structure of vanadium pentoxide, which is also verified by the Jessica card number this zero zero nine zero three eight seven. So we have calculated some uh, some like a crystallized size of the some parameters, like the sister of parameters, uh, to theta degrees after WHM and crystal size of three dominant peaks separately. What we have obtained for these peaks, like uh, we are having the around the 15, less than 15 nanometer. For one on zero peak, we are having the around 20, 20 nanometer and the, and 400, 400 is like uh, 15 to 16 nanometer. To confirm that, like our our structure, our further study, we have also done the Ramon spectra. The peak here, we are having the 142 means uh, before and after. So uh, you can see the the changes is like after the bulb milling, the um, the peaks are slightly lower as compared to the before before bulb milling. So the peaks here, the the dominant peak one at around 142. Which is due to the skeleton bent um, bent vibration. Uh, 
vibration and other peaks, these are related to the, here I will show you the vibration B3G, B2G, B2G and B3G. These are the vibration modes, and these are the, which is related to the oxygen, oxygen vanadium double bond. This one is B2O, and this is also related to the, the oxygen double bonds. This, uh, this information is also related to the, uh, uh, with the ben vanadium pentoxide. So we check the morphology. The, the, the thing is that after the ball milling uh, with the mechanical energy of the ball is transferred to the, to the material, which rupture or which destroy, means uh, which decreases the size of the material. So you know to check difference, you know, like before and after we have seen that like here we have uh, comparatively, this one is like completely higher grain size uh, to the after ball milling. Uh, we can have the like semi spherical or rod like structure different, but here we are having uh, all the cases having the same quasi spherical sizes. Among them also like uh, we are having the this uh, one milling at nine hour. I think I have, I have not put it, but three, six, nine, uh, 12, 15, and 18. Like similar way. Uh, I didn't include, but this is a nine hour. So we are having the more homogeneous grains uh, compared to other other ball mill times. So you have to confirm the confirm the the materials we are having the oxygen vanadium or other materials. Here, uh, their distribution, we have checked the EDS spectra or EDS mapping. So these are the for different times and different times of ball milling. So what is the difference is that before ball milling, the vanadium concentration was 56 atomic percent. So after that, it is related to the, uh, after that it is going through the more uh, unit means going to the oxygen vanadium composition is uh, homogeneous or what could say. 50-50 percent. So it is decreased, but it is a, like a symmetrical, symmetrical composition of the uh, elements. We also checked the we calculated the uh, observance and reflectance from here by using Kubel uh, equations. We have calculated the band gap, and uh, before uh, before ball milling, we are having 3.07. So after ball milling, the the band gap is decreased. In, as you can, we are having the minimum is 2.70, which is the, which is the uh, BO at nine, nine hours. So the the decrement of these these band gap, my, uh, the there might be the after three ball milling, the elements or electrons are are distributed to near to the bands, each of band, and where, like you can see, they are, they are forming this uh, state. No, the state they are near to the balance band and conversion band, so decreasing the band gap. So the idea of this work is to check how it works on the sen sensor, no gas sensor. So what we work on this uh, carbon monoxide gas, uh, we have we have done it. So the first. While doing the sen sensor applications, what first we need to do the atmosphere, like air. Here it will uh, in the air conditions, the it passes and it it can it can get the chemis chemical oxygen, which trap the electrons first that, that trap electron, and then after um, after that it is introduced the carbon monoxide. The idea is to the producing the idea is to get the maximum sense sensing property. Is the carbon monoxide can produce free more free electrons. As more free electrons, you can have the more electrical resistance and the sensing response. But in our case, by means we calculate the sensing response is with this formula. But uh, in our case, what we have obtained the uh, resistance is is very low. This material is very low. That's why like uh, we 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 can calculate by sensing response, but uh, we have having very low response. We couldn't calculate the sensing response, uh, but only we have we can present here. They all we miss very low sensing property is obtained from this material to different different. Although it might might can work like by doping other materials, 
can help you to get more, more sensing response. So we are having in conclusions. Uh, we are having the autonomical uh, fishing structure from, from the verified by XRD and Raman spectra. And also from the same, we are having the quasi spherical grains with homogeneous, uh, homogeneous and uniform grains can obtain it nine hours. And we are having the band gap decrease from 3.07 to 2.70 electron volt. It contains very it is contain very low response against carbon monoxide gas for, by using this the samples. So I would like to acknowledge people from Simbesta, people from UNA and CC, Conasit, and all of you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. The session is open for questions. Do you have any question? Well, I have a couple of things. Can you show the X-ray diffraction spectra? Uh, you show, you, you said in your conclusions that the preferential uh, orientation changed, <clears throat> but you have powders, yes? And one powder, has no preferential orientation. It means uh, what I wanted to wanted to say that the, the planes. The, yes, yes, but do you come? Well, I well, that's another point. I don't see any difference between R six. Are almost all identical spectra. Yes. Okay, yes. okay that's it. That is one point. Uh, in the left spectra, you have a, a pattern with a texture. It's a solid, it's not a powder. It's, it, it, it is powder. This is also powder. Oh, yes. So, so that it is like a little like a, we bought it from the Sigma Harvest. Maybe it's the, one powder, yes. Because the, the, well, and if you compare with the data sheet, PDF data sheets? Yes, this this one means uh, I, I... Yes, but, but, but you don't know to, to compare them. I, I wanted to ask you if they... if the relative intensities... Yes. Uh, ...with the PDF data sheet, which is more close to the theoretical... Ah, yes, I need yes, but I need to maybe I I need to check that. Yes. yes, but because that could be a very good point. If which one is the theoretical to get the factor of that of change. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, because it could be just the way you present your powders or maybe uh, to verify it. Yes, yes. okay. I will check it. Well, uh, well, can you put in the Raman spectra? Well, I see uh, about the same, the left, the right spectra uh, are almost all identical. Yes. But I see that you have a shift or odd peaks. Is that a, for example, the 100, 145, and 142, and then you have a 288, and then 487, 412, let's see it. Is that an instrumentation error or there is a reason for the shift? Because all peaks of the right side are shifted to the lower values. Lower values. There might be, like, for example, while doing the ball milling, the uh, the bonds between the barium and oxygen. So th this picks, like, for example, uh, what is related to our barium and oxygen double bonds. And this peak, this peak, sorry, this peak is B2O, the vibration, no? So maybe after doing the ball milling, it might can... Just, but my question is, why do you have a, a shift? 
Did you make both measurements in the same system? Uh, yes. But you don't, you don't present the same scale. Okay. Yeah, maybe that because there is, I should yes. have put it here, maybe the intensity, maybe like uh, yeah. we have the same learning. Well, because I thought like uh, but, if but, I can say so. Yeah. But you don't have an explanation why do you have a, a shift to lower variables? No, maybe I will check that also, but the main reason can be the due to the ball meaning, ball meaning effect. Mm -hmm. It can have changes the but, vibrations. Yeah. OK. OK, and the last question is this question stop. OK, we have three minutes and uh, uh, can you put the end gap? No, there is another with different depth. OK, that's that's what. E, you have a. Why do you have, for example? If you do it three hours is 2.8 and six hour 2.88 and nine hours 2.7 and then rise again and then lowers again. Is that more than an experimental error? Uh, is because you have it rises, it sinks, it rises again. It, this one, like uh, this, what we have completed from the Kubel Kamonic equations. So the 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 reflection ref, reflectance, uh, the value, what what I have achieved, like uh, this way. So you can see it is it is like a uh, here it is decreases in case when yes, but, but the increase. question is why do you have different values? I you yeah, don't have a trend. Yeah, we I don't have uh, yes. For example, if you do it to, for three hours you have two point eight. Yes. And for six hours it rises again. Okay. And for nine hours two point seven it, it sinks again. Is that that would be I would think it's an experimental this the error or that is in your error bar of your experiment. This might be like what I had checked on literature. This might be the, for example, while doing the ball medium, it can, um, the band between this with the oxygen and, ba and this barium, barium oxide, the electrons or charge carriers, uh, while doing doing the ball medium, it can, it might stay on the surface of the so balance is balance is there, no? Like uh, it can stay on the balance band or the combustion band. The electrons are holes, so that it can. For this case, why it is decreased, so means if the electrons is uh, near to the means surface to the combustion band and the balance band, we are having the holes, so that it uh, the, from the balance band to combustion band to the distance is decreased. Well, well. Anyway, my point was there is not, not a point other than you see by meeting you have a reduction in the gap, but the reduction is not it just the pain of the time you you are near the okay. I am finished. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. And we are going to the last session of the day. That's the last is going to be given by Jose Josue <coughs> Rodriguez Pisano, and he's going to talk about synthesis and characterization of the six sulfide films deposited by spray pyrolysis. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about these preliminary results of this project titled Synthesis and Characterization of Zinc Sulfide Film Deposited by Spiperolysis. And my name is Jose Rodriguez. And well, the content of these presentations are divided in a short introduction, the experimental methodology, the results, and the conclusion. As an introduction, well, the zinc sulfide is a, is the 
o de, de, de general characteristics of this compound uh, is a two six semicom, uh, semiconductor compound. It has a uh, intact conductivity. Uh, this material has a uh, direct bang out uh, reported in a range of 3.2 to 3.7 electron volts. Uh, it has a uh, two uh, crystallographic um, crystalline crystallographic structure. Uh, cubic sim blender type and other hexagonal uh, structure. It has a high reflective index, a high resistivity, and, and in general, it's in a good chemical or his chemical uh, stability is good in general. And nowadays, uh, this um, material can be applied in different areas, such as transparent electronic devices, photo detectors, uh, luminescence, luminescence uh, applications, and photocatalysis. Uh, in side of the chemistry or in the trends of the chemistry nowadays, there are the green chemistry. Uh, we usually, or there are many paper reported, uh, the use of natural plant extract for a uh, synthesis uh, different kind of materials. We can use different parts of the we, uh, we can use different parts of the plants, like the leaves, the flowers, the fruits, the roots, for uh, getting uh, the extracts to get the uh, chemical compounds that are uh, present in these uh, parts of the plant or in these plants. In this case, uh, these uh, organic compounds uh, act as a functionalizing, functionalizing agents production agents or structure directing agents. In this work, we work with uh, rosemary, uh, in Spanish it's called romero, and we uh, get, uh, we got a um, rosemary extract for synthesized uh, zinc uh, sulfide films. Uh, we use uh, the spire pyrolysis, the position technique, this uh, technique comes or uh, when you uh, well, throw a precursor solution, this precursor solution is uh, atomized to forming an sprite, and this sprite is uh, deposited on the surface of the substrate, a heat substrate, and in this uh, surface of the substrate, uh, well, uh, take uh, uh, take place the uh, pyrolysis reaction and the deposition of the final material. As a methodology, well, uh, first we synthesize um, things like films without extract, and the methodology is uh, as follows in this slide. Uh, we use as a source uh, zinc chloride and theorea for the sources of zinc and sulfur. And it was an um, aqua solution, and, and this solution was added four milliliters of this chlorated acid. Uh, the solution was steering for 30 minutes. After that, uh, it was um, it was uh, placed into an ultrasonic bath for other 40 minutes. And uh, we use a system for spray paralysis deposition with uh, these conditions. The thin bath temperature was 300, 350 uh, Celsius degree. The substrate and the nozzle distance was 20 centimeters. Uh, we use different times for the positions, one, two, three, and four minutes, and the flow and the flow rate of the precursor solution was constant uh, with a value of 0 0.8 uh, milliliters per minute. After that, well, the film was characterized by different, uh, different techniques, uh, such as uh, X-ray diffraction, uh, SEM, uh, AFM, uh, UVBs, uh, UVBs, uh, UVBs spectroscopy, and infrared spectroscopy. For the um, rosemary extract, uh, well, first the rosemary was washed with the ionized water. Uh, after that, well, the rosemary plant was leafless with the leaf we obtain the extract and we apply a chemical maceration uh, process with a solvent. In this case, we use uh, ethanol. And after that, this process or after this process, we only feel we have a process of filtration for obtaining the final uh, plant extract. extract. In this case, was a rosemary extract. 
for the synthesis of the zinc sulfide uh, films with the rosemary extract, the methodology uh, is the same as the films uh, without this extract. Only the difference is in the proportion of the aqueous, uh, aqueous medium. Uh, we use different percentage of uh, this extract and uh, mix it with the water. We use a uh, 5, 15, 25, and 50 uh, percentage of this extract with, with, in respect with the total volume of the solution. And uh, all the uh, condition was the same, except the time of deposition. We uh, maintain the three minutes for the deposition time constant. And we character we made the characterization as the films without a uh, rosemary extract. Uh, as a result, first I show well in this slide uh, we can see the um, uh, diffraction patterns of the zinc sulfide films. In all the cases, for all the time uh, the deposition times, well it, uh, we can appreciate uh, the um, characteristic uh, diffraction peaks for a zinc sulfide cubic phase. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we can observe uh, uh, other uh, diffraction pe peaks that uh, correspond to uh, zinc uh, elemental zinc phase. We also calculate the uh, crystallic size with the Schroeder equation in all the materials, all the films presented a nanometric uh, crystallic size in a range of 2.7 to 4.2 nanometers. In the case of the films uh, with rosemary extract, well, in all the cases, we can observe the characteristic diffraction peaks for the zinc sulfide cubic phase. And in the case of the films, the film with 5% of rosemary extract, the diffraction peaks uh, which correspond to the uh, zinc, uh, elemental zinc phase, well, is smaller than the film that don't have this extract. And in the um, films that uh, synthesize with 15 and higher percent of this rosemary extract, this phase is not appearing in the diffracto diffractograms uh, patterns. And we can conclude that in this part, that the rosemary has an effect in the well in in getting the sulfur uh, zinc sulfur sulfate uh, cubic phase pure, and we also calculate the uh, crystalline size with the Scherer equation, and we also notice that the uh, all the crystalline uh, sizes are nanometric in a range of 1.7 to 2.1 nanometers. And we also uh, will analyze these uh, samples with uh, same analysis for the morphological properties. In letter A, in letter A, we is the film, the zinc sulfide film without a um, strap. And we can see, or it can be, uh, it can uh, be appreciated that the deposit is homogeneous. And in the rest of the images, to be to the e, uh, images with the different uh, percentage of the rosemary extract, we can appreciate the formation or the uh, the presence of the morpho uh, particles with a spherical morphology, and and also with forming agglomerates of these particles. Uh, we uh, also study the surface properties of the zinc sulfide films by AFM analysis. And while well, the dimensions of the grains were measured and found to be in the range of 52 for 100 nanometers, and the scan of uh, area for the surface roughness measure was in an area of in the area of five micrometers for uh, five micrometers. And it's not clear that train here, but in percentage of five to 25, the roughness tends to decrease. Only in the uh, sample with a higher concentration or percentage of this rosemary, well, the, the roughness increase. 
And we also measure the optical properties uh, through the UVBs, uh, their uh, uh, diffuse reflectance spectroscopy. In a figure five, uh, I, well, you can see the, the spectrum of the films at different times or at different position times without rosemary extract. Um, uh, uh, we calculate the band gap energy uh, through the tau method. In all the cases, we obtain a uh, band gap energy in the range of 3.2 to 3.4 uh, electron volts. As uh, the literature reported, is reported. Uh, however, in the case of the films with the rosemary extract, we obtain a um, uh, 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 gas energy uh, around to 3.2 to 1.2 uh, electron volts. This can be uh, a hypothesis. Is the organic uh, compounds that are present in the rosemary extract can be deposited on the surface of the zinc sulfide particles. For try to um, identify or corroborate the presence of these uh, organic compounds on the surface of this material, we took the infrared spectra uh, of all the samples with um, a different percentage of rosemary extract and without a uh, rosemary extract. We saw first in 502 uh, um, centimeters in the vibrational frequency, we noticed the uh, bonding of zinc and sulfur. That is characteristic for this material. And also it can be appreciated other um, uh, frequencies, vibrational frequencies that we can associate for other uh, functional groups that can be uh, present for the presence of other uh, organic compounds that, uh, for example, chlorophyll, flavonoids, or saponins that are present in the uh, rosemary extract. However, we must to do other techniques of characterization for trying to confirm this hypothesis. As a conclusion, in this work, the properties of zinc sulfide films deposited by the spray pyrolysis method uh, with, uh, with a rosemary extract and without rosemary extract were studied. For the zinc sulfide films deposited at different times without rosemary extract, it was not observed that all the films present a cubic phase um, zinc sulfide with a preferential growth orientation in the plane 111 and crystalline size or crystallic size in, an, in a range of 4.2 to 2.7 nanometers. Additionally, well, all the, uh, the films in this case present uh, elemental zinc phase, and this is due to the evaporation of the sulfur during the deposition of the films. Uh, in the case of the rosemary extract uh, films with the uh, adding this rosemary extract, uh, only the uh, film with 5% present this uh, signal of a big, uh, this diffraction peak of the elemental zinc, uh, but uh, in the rest of the, the films, there is not appear uh, this, um, the presence of this element. Uh, in the crystalline size uh, decrease considerably uh, in a range of one, 0.7 to 2.1 nanometers. According to the X-ray uh, diffraction results, adding to the rosemary extract favors the formation of the cubic uh, zinc sulfide phase. From the same images of the zinc sulfide films, uh, the synthesis uh, with rosemary extract in all the cases show a small particle size with a spherical morphology and formation of agglomerations, agglomerates. And for the AFM micrograph, shows surface with irregular frame size. From the uh, analysis of the optical properties, well, the zinc sulfide films at different deposition time, it was observed that uh, as the deposition times increase, the uh, band gap energy tends to decrease from 3.4 to 3.2 electron volts. For the films that possess different percentage of the strap, show a significant band gap decrease from 3 
to 1.2 electron volts, and this is could be for the presence of these uh, organic compounds. And the presence of the organic compounds in the fields was corroborated through infrared spectroscopy. As I said, um, uh, we must uh, do more uh, uh, characterization techniques for trying to identify uh, which are these um, organic compounds. Uh, well, these uh, zinc sulfide films synthesize offer good crystallographical, morphological, and optical properties, which are promising a uh, characteristic for application in optoelectronic, such as uh, solar cells and heterogeneous photocatalysts. Uh, uh, well, uh, the author appreciated the technical support for all the our colleagues, and this is some um, reference. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Great news, David. How can you calculate the, the crystal size? With the Sharon equation. And the, the diffraction pattern? In the diffraction pattern, we measure the FW, FW, H, M. Sorry. <laughs> If WHM, we can well estimate or we measure this uh, parameter and we apply the shared equation. Only for these, uh, uh, pardon, sorry, uh, for uh, the plane 111. One, one. Okay. Thank you. Another question? Uh, well, I have one question, but I try three minutes, but I have one question. Did you measure the carrier concentration of the films? The, sorry? Carrier concentration no. of the films. No, no, I couldn't measure uh, yet the electrical properties of the of the uh, these films. Okay. And a uh, second question is uh, about your the composition of the the rosemary shrug is ah. is not a very I mean, if you are working with thermal conductors, strawberry is an organic compound extracted from mm -hmm. a plant, so it's not so pure. Purity. Mm, well, we can make different uh, process for try to purify the extract and get only uh, an specific uh, organic compounds that can be, as I said, in the in the introduction as a functional a functionalizing agents oh. or reducing agents or in this case if we want to use or apply this organic compound for get a specific morphology uh, we can make some chromatographic uh, processes for try to to purify the strength but in this case well we are uh, starting this uh, research area in our group Any other questions? Well, if we don't have any questions, we can thank the speaker. And we close the session. I, I want to thank uh, the technical support of this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.